Let us do a small recap of what we've learned and what, what is our objective with CS450. So in CS450, there are really three main things I want to try to, that I hope that you will learn. So the first one is really teaching you fundamental concepts behind many programming language, uh, many programming languages. So functional programming, delayed evaluation, um, somehow doing control flow control <laughs> or programming control flow. Uh, exceptions. Um, we also talk, covered object-oriented systems, monads, macros. We talked about the pattern matching and then we also saw different ways of doing variable scoping which is usually kind of ignored uh, and also immutable. We had a big focus in immutable data structures. So there was it was mostly a, a very wide range of, of lots of features of programming languages that do exist in, in, in different ones. So possibly in, in the future programming language that you will use in your job, you will see some of these features, or if not, you've learned how to implement them if you're interested in, in changing the programming model of your project. The other thing that I hope you learned is really to give you a, a framework with 450, you have a framework to describe language concepts. And this framework was really like a two-pronged approach where you have formalism that tries to clean up specification and separates that from the actual implementation. We saw a great use case of that, which is the lambda calculus, which describes the semantics of functional application and functions as values. And we also learned about uh, monads and looking at monads as a way to describe many different patterns that exist um, in, in the world with like side effect computation and how to represent that in a immut in immutable setting. Thirdly, I hope I gave you a methodology to try to understand complex systems. That is to kind of separate things that are fundamental. So if, if you recall, if you consider, for instance, the last module where we looked at Lambda uh, at JavaScript and we tried to distill what are the fundamental features that actually represent the programming language model. And we were able to dist distill three which is function application, right? And using functions as values. We learn about mutability of objects and the lookups. So basically looking at objects as environments. Um, and that's basically it. Those two features we were able to distill from JavaScript and we are able to represent a big part of how JavaScript works. We also learned how to implement and test um, or to use tests to motivate specification and design. So we used in all of our eight homework assignments tests to communicate what is being asked of you and you were asked to communicate in terms of tests. So when something is not working, I hope you you worked on trying to figure out a test case that a test case that showcases the bug and tries to explain why your code is not working. So today we're going to cover, we're going to revisit JavaScript's object system and then we're going to talk about simple JS which is just a way to make specific, make very concrete what is the subset of JavaScript that we're interested in. Uh, and this is, this is going to use an S-based syntax so that we can manipulate it using uh, Racket. And then we're going to introduce Lambda.js, which is this formalism very close to what you've learned. Lambda calculus, references, and immutable objects. And immutable objects, think of these as environments. And with these three capabilities, so this would be the heap, right? Lambda calculus, just at homework four. And immutable objects, again, think um, homework five. 
with these three capabilities, we are able to represent Lambda.js, which is used in the paper, the essence of JavaScript to give um, a, a correct implementation of JavaScript meaning. And then this tool is used to find bugs in existing implementations of JavaScript. So now what we're going to start learning is how to translate simple JS in terms of Lambda JS. So giving meaning to JavaScript in these three distilled features, Lambda calculus, refer references, and immutable objects. So how do we make something that is as complex as JavaScript with class, uh, with the, you know, the, the keyword class extends and then methods and all that. And how can we distill all of that or, or show how to construct those syntactic constructs as simpler things that simply have functions, references, and immutable objects. So why are we learning all this? Because we already know Lambda Calculus, we already know immutable objects, and we already know references. So we have everything, we have all the foundation to be able to understand La JavaScript very deeply. Um, and one thing I also mentioned in our last video is that, and I hope that you realize this distinction, is that so far in the last modules, all except for this one, we've been looking at giving meaning to programming language by means of implementing them. So that's how we specify what is record. We specified what is record by s explaining how you would compute it. We gave a state, which is the ST, and then we have an, a heap as well. And then we rewrite the heap, the the program. We kind of transform it and rewrite it. And that's how we do execution, right? With this pair of things, which is the environment, the heap, and the code, which eventually returns a value, right? So that is known as an operational view of semantics of a programming language. And now what we're learning in this in this module is a denotational semantics, which is to give meaning of a programming language by means of some other programming language. So that is what a compiler does, and that's what we're learning in this module, right? So that is basically the difference between a compiler and an interpreter. A compiler gives meaning to a program by means of another programming language, and an interpreter gives meaning to a program by running the given program executing it directly. Okay, so just to recap what we have in terms of, of JavaScript, we learn these three features. We learn this notion, this special field underscore underscore proto, which effectively links two objects together so that, for instance, if you have a field and you connect B to A, now all the fields that are not in B but R and A become available in B. So in this case, X would look up 30 because it's defined in B. Z would look up 90 because it's defined in B. And Y would look up 20 because it's defined in A, but not in B. And notice that um, Z, sorry, X, we're looking up the version that is defined in, in B and not the version that is defined in A, exactly like environments the environments that we learned work. The other thing that we learned was that functions can be used to construct objects as long as you, you prefix the function call with new. So what that does is it creates internally an object and then that object is accessible via this special variable this. And thirdly, what we've learned was that any function we can specify what is the prototype of the instance being created. So it's just a way to give a temp, what is the, by default, all the instances are going to be linked to the field C colon prototype. So the func the constructor name dot prototype. So in this example, if we say that the prototype is foo and bar, um, now when I create a new D, it is already initialized with foo and bar because it's linked. So I'm using the star just to notice uh, 
inherited field versus without star that is not inherited. It's defined, right? Because new defines x and y. Okay, so now try to answer this question. What is the name of the paper we are studying? Please pause the video and then I'll give the answer. Okay, so the name of the paper that we are studying is the essence of JavaScript. That's what we're learning and that's what we're effectively we're implementing a part of the paper in this homework in homework eight.